uh, at three and nine. One more for you. Who is the most uncoverable wide receiver in the NFL right at this moment? Oh, it's easy. Uh, I have Stephon Diggs. It's always been Stephon Diggs. I love Stephon Diggs. I remember getting laughed at on this program back when he was a Viking, and I said he was the best receiver in football at that time, or at least the best route runner. And it's clear that now when people, like, ask me, I don't know if you know this, but I used to play cornerback. I do. And people ask, like, who's the toughest receiver to cover? You never take into account the quarterback, but that really determines – how difficult a receiver is to cover. They can get open all they want. The quarterback can't get it to him, then it's a problem. And Josh Allen can get it to him anywhere in any way, and that makes him even more difficult because nobody can stay close to Stephon Diggs. Nope. I knew he was going to pick the Maryland guy for some Mar reason. Oh, he went to Maryland? Oh, did. Did really? you not? You, oh, you didn't realize Go that. Terps. That's exactly right. Buffalo currently occupies the number one seed in the AFC, but our analytics give the Chiefs a slightly higher chance to win the conference. Both teams are behind... Dallas, uh, which has the best chance of any team to make and win the Super Bowl, according to ESPN's analytics right at this moment. But Dallas, of course, plays uh, in the NFC. And we were talking about the AFC and Buffalo, which was the preseason favorite uh, to make the Super Bowl and probably win the Super Bowl out of the AFC. And they, you know, been a little up and down, but they do sit in that number one seed. The Von Miller injury. I'm yes. curious, Kmart, what your thoughts are on uh, the significance of that in terms of Buffalo's chances going forward. I think it is significant because he was a piece that they picked up in the offseason. You're like, okay, the Bills understand it's their time. Um, a, a week ago, Vaughn had said, you know, he's got some lateral meniscus damage, but he expected his hope was to be back in time for this Jets game. So today we'll see whether he practices or not, what, what he's able to do. Um, I, what he brings to this team, it goes beyond the field, though. We know the kind of player he is. But he is a guy who has the perspective of a champion. This is a Buffalo franchise that knows what it's like to get right up to the line and fall flat. Like, they understand what it's like to be disappointed time and time again. So I think when, when, they, when they lose to good teams or when, when things seem like they're in disarray, what's going on, Josh Allen? Vaughn is that calming spirit of, like, yeah, we lost a game. Like, yeah. okay. Like, I I've won championships with the Broncos. I've won championships with the Rams. And that's what he brings. And I think that intangible is actually the most important thing. Of course, they did uh, put him on IR right before their game on Thursday. So he has to miss at least the next three games. How big a deal is that? I think it's a big deal. Well, it's not a big deal for these three games. But how he gets back, if he, when he gets back, the value that he brings to the team is a big deal. He's a game closer, as we all know. And when the Bills have the lead in important games, Von Miller is going to be the guy that creates the pressure, creates the sack that leads to the turnover, that leads to the third and 15 that ends the game. Not having him at full strength is going to be a problem despite the fact that they have other good pass rushers up there. But we look back at last year's championship and think about how good Von Miller was. Von Miller was the reason why the Broncos won a championship. No doubt. Having that level of experience yeah. and intensity and, uh, and that player out there on the field is much more valuable than he can be on the sideline. So we'll see how he is when he gets back, but it does make a difference. Yeah, it's easy to quantify Von's impact. All you have to do is look at the Thursday night game game that the Bills played against the Patriots. They only sacked Mac Jones once in 38 dropbacks. So you need Von Miller out there to be the closer, especially when you're up against the upper echelon teams in the AFC, the Pat Mahomes of the world mm -hmm. and the, uh, the Joe Burrows of the world. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've got to be able to get those guys on the ground. And without Von Miller, that becomes exponentially harder for the Buffalo Bills. Not to mention, now the division is in question without Von Miller if you look at their schedule down the stretch. Mm -hmm. So the team he played for last year at the end of the season was the Rams helped them win the Super Bowl. Since that game, things have not <laughs> gone super well for the Rams. Remember, they, I said life comes at you fast, right? Last year, the Rams sign Odell Beckham after Cleveland cuts him because he wasn't getting along with Baker Mayfield. They win the Super Bowl. They hold open a locker for Odell Beckham. We get to December, and guess who's on the team? That's right, Baker Mayfield. <laughs> Claimed off the waiver wire by the Rams. Expected to fly to Los Angeles by last night and could play, uh, according to our Adam Schefter, as soon as tomorrow night against the, the Raiders. Uh, that seems a little, I mean, you, you think that's it's possible. Uh, so I was talking to people last night. It's he has a shot, but it's a long shot. That's how it was characterized to me, just because of what he'd have to get up to speed within like a few hours and play. Now, with the with the Rams, they're in an interesting position because this is a team that understands their season is over. 
and they're also trying to evaluate talent for next year. So they want to evaluate the quarterbacks. They want to evaluate the wide receivers, the running backs, O-line. They're thinking about next year. So I, when people say, like, oh, Baker could resurrect his career, there actually is no mandate that he's going to get there and start all five games. Like, he, it was described to me as he could be on the bench yeah. for a lot of those games. Exactly. And we're just, we're just taking a look at Baker. So people thinking that, ah, oh, Baker's back. I mean, not playing might be better for Baker. Actually, I think yes. that he yes, needs, he needs a, a good landing spot to resurrect his career, and the Rams is not a good landing spot. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're not playing well. Obviously, they don't have Cooper Cup. The O-line hasn't been good. The running attack isn't great. The defense is still talented, but Aaron Donald's not playing. Right. He needs to go somewhere where things are set up for him to succeed. And going to this team, like if he went to a bad team, that's one thing. People wouldn't expect much of him. And the Rams are a bad team, but they have a good coach, and they're coming out of the Super Bowl win. I I think Baker going there and not having success probably ends up hurting him going forward. It's going to be like he failed in Cleveland. He failed with Matt Rule. You mm -hmm. could explain away. You can't explain away failing with uh, McVay. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, I I'm with those guys on that one. But I, I think there's a much bigger question that we have to be asking about the Los Angeles Rams. Is retirement on the table for Matt Stafford? Mm. I mean, you're starting to hear reports that that is something that has been discussed internally with the Rams and something that Stafford has discussed with his family. So, I mean, this signing with Baker Mayfield, it's clearly not about this year. Yeah. It's about the future. And we also know that Sean McVay had a love affair with Baker Mayfield coming out of college. So, this could be a situation where Sean McVay thinks that Baker Mayfield could be the extended bridge until they find a long-term answer at their quarterback spot if and when Matt Stafford walks away. It didn't cost him. I mean, it cost him about $1.3 million for the rest of the year. Get a look at Baker Mayfield and see if maybe Sean McVay can do something. How much you're making a seat. Something That's how much you're making a year. With it. it's, it's for, for Aaron Judge money, uh, that would be nothing. <laughs> That's right. It's time for Dominique Foxworth to answer a series of hard-hitting questions about what's going on uh, in the NFL. I'm starting the AFC East. Who's done the worst coaching job in that division? You got to set me up. I feel like yeah, that's a softball, yeah, yeah, man. Everybody else is good. It's obviously Bill Belichick. Yeah. Like, they've taken a step back at the quarterback position. He made some questionable decisions about who was going to co coordinate that offense, which honestly I didn't think was going to be that big of a problem, but I was dead wrong, and so has Bill Belichick been thus far this season. They're clearly the worst team in their division and also like the, the least promising team. If mm. you look at any of those other teams going forward, I'd rather be a fan or a player on any of those teams unless Tom Brady comes we'll back. We'll see what Belichick, ooh, that's an interesting We'll see what Belichick and the Patriots do to turn it around this offseason. Maybe they will bring Tom Brady back. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that another time. Which NFC North team has a brighter future, Detroit Lions or the Chicago Bears? All right, so I could go either way on this, but I'm going to go with the Lions because I think the Lions have some important foundational pieces. They don't have the big piece, which the Bears obviously have in quarterback. They at least have what they think is the answer there. I'm not sure that golf is a long-term answer there, but they have offensive and defensive linemen. They have Jeff Okuda, when healthy, is an incredible cornerback. They have an incredibly productive offense that if they could be more consistent on defense, they'd be a competitive team this year. So I think actually having the foundational pieces is a little more interesting than having a promising quarterback and a lot of cap space going forward, which is like the Bears in a nutshell. You know what else the Lions have? They got the Rams' first-round draft pick, which Ooh, looks pretty sweet looks, right now with the Rams oh, sitting 